going on guys victor here today we are going after the highly invasive bull's eye snake head down here in south florida got my buddy james with me we're going to hit up a bunch of canals taking you guys along and today's video is actually sponsored by simply safe but more on them later you guys would think that we're going offshore that's not the case today with my good buddy james what's up guys we're, we're making it happen we're out here i'm looking like a highlighter and uh we're gonna catch a snake up. Not so nice weather down here in South Florida. This is actually like the first time it's rained in months. Um, we're after one of my favorite fish called the bull's eye snakehead. Man, we can't catch a break. So yesterday I tried to film a snakehead video with James and another buddy of mine and did not go as planned. We only caught two. Today, Look at this. We got a torrential downpour. I mean, me and James are all suited up and I can handle a little, a little light rain, but I can't even get any video for you guys if it's pouring like this. So uh, we just gotta wait it out, see what happens. Oh, that was it. Man, that was tough. So you guys see how there's like overhanging branches and stuff right there? Well, I was stuck on one of the uh, reeds and popping my frog up and down and that pop you heard, that was the snakehead, but I wasn't sure if he had it in his mouth or not. There, oh my gosh, he missed it again. Oh, this time I let him eat it and he missed it again. I don't know what's going on here. When we got here, James went that way. I went that way. Guess which side of the canal had the fish? The chef's side. Look Guess at these dinosaurs. Just trying to catch you guys dinner, you know. Giants. What do you think? I, I'd say seven this, to 10 pounds. This one's pushing. Yeah, at least eight to nine on this one, seven on this one for sure. They're thick, super aggressive. So much fun though. Good old coconut head. James is not one for talking today. We gotta get him. We gotta get him <laughs> in the kitchen and and, and loosened up. I'm just staring at him and just scheming up all the different types of ideas right now. I'm, now I'm hungry, so we're gonna get in the kitchen. We're gonna do something nice with these, and uh, happy I got some for real. So we still need to get some on video for you guys. I had like two or three blow ups. I saw a tarpon, but it's amazing. We walked probably the same amount of distance. He had that whole body of water. Sometimes they're in one part of the canal and not the other. So I'm going to put the head cam back on and let's get some on video for you guys. A lot of tilapia beds, huh? Oh, <gasps> you see that? Yeah, oh, dude, he ch chased it all the way to shore. That's a good one too. Jeez, dude, all the way to shore. That's why we love these fish, guys. Straight yeah, straight braid. It's 65, it should not break. If he's hooked good, I would just rip him up. I got it. Jeez Louisa. Dude, that's why you can't give up on that cast. That fish, there was like a tilapia bed right there. He followed it all the way up. You saw that? That was sick. It was sick. Nice. Hell Thank yeah, you. dude. That's a good one. Look at that. Choked it. You want to say that thing was hungry? Holy smokes all the way down the hatch huh see they got teeth they're not that big but definitely don't prefer to stick my hands in there Your hold mouth open. right here on the side of the road and the cool thing about florida is you know a lot of you guys i know email me message me on instagram of all these saltwater things to do but this is honestly one of the most fun things and free things to do you don't need a charter you don't need a boat florida's got such a huge uh, grid-like system of canals and lakes and there's just access everywhere. We're literally on the side of the road. 
And this right here is one of the best eating fish you guys could get in South Florida out of fresh water. Super hard fighters, just real cool fish. And listen to this. I love doing this every time we catch them. They got that really strong head. And you can definitely see why they call them a snake head. If you look at them dead on, looks like a big old snake coming at you. So one reason people take the whole invasive species thing so seriously in Florida is you guys see a little canal like this is connected to that bigger canal. And in some way or another is most likely connected to another bigger body of water. We don't have very much completely uh, cut off water systems in here. Even a lot of the residential neighborhoods around in South Florida are connected to a canal or, or a bigger canal system. So things can move freely. Florida is a tropical climate. So it's a breeding ground for a ton of invasive stuff. But I tried, I only got one fish on video for you. I tried, we tried, we went to like 10 different spots, but sometimes they just stay real deep and are not very active, which was today. You know, we caught those first few fish in the beginning and that's it. So what James and I were throwing are these just little imitation frogs. Like I said, just throwing it up on the bank along the canal and structure. And these guys are real ambush predators. You always see them kind of tucked up underneath the grass or wood structure. And frogs are a natural part of a lot of fish's diet in South Florida. We got tons of frogs. So you got a picture. Frogs gonna hop off the bank into the water, bam. Snakehead's gonna slurp them. They are built perfectly to pop things on top of the water. They got a big wide open mouth. So you got Mr. Frog coming by and he just slurps them up. And the bullseye part, the reason they're called a bullseye snakehead is because of this spot right here. So that's a false eye. You see that a lot in the animal kingdom. It's a defense mechanism, so that way a predator is not gonna go for their head, but instead their tail. Real big scales, right around that peck fin. A lot of shoulder meat. And then line your filet up. Let's just go right down. All the way to the tail. And so you guys might be wondering, Vic, are you really going to eat this fish that's living on the side of the road in a, you know, not very good looking canal? You know, I don't eat a lot of freshwater fish, but this is one of them that I do. And I'm not really worried about South Florida's water just because, like I was telling you guys earlier and showing you with that drone footage, we have so much connected water that most of these canals, it's not really sitting stagnant water. There's always new water replenishing it. Um, you know, we do have a lot of fertilizers, a lot of fertilizers and pesticides in South Florida, but the water's always being filtered. So it doesn't really bother me and I don't eat a whole lot of it. But I know that you're not supposed to eat as much freshwater fish as you are saltwater fish. And I think they actually have a higher concentration of mercury. Look at that, beautiful filet on this guy. You would never know that that is from the side of the road. You know, I don't think we've ever opened up a snakehead belly, have we, no, Brooke? No, why not? I don't know. Holy moly, what, what is, is that? It smells, I'll tell you that. I wanna say it's another snakehead. You guys comment below, what do you we think this is? Before we move on, a quick message from today's video sponsor, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is an easy to set up reliable home security system with 24 seven professional monitoring. With all the fishing and traveling that Burke and I do, having home security was really important to us. Setup was incredibly easy. Everything came in a nice little box. You got video doorbells, glass break sensors, motion sensors, water sensors, carbon monoxide detectors, and best of all, most of this is all based on a peel and stick system. All of these sensors are linked to a base station, which is linked to a keypad, so you can choose whether you're home, away, or you can turn the system off. Simply Safe even has an incredibly easy to use app. I have mine linked to my video camera that came with the Simply Safe system so I can see exactly what's going on in my house even when I'm not at home. So let's say one of the entryway sensors or motion sensors goes off while you're not home. The monitoring center will call the police if it's alerted to anything. If you guys are interested in learning more about Simply Safe, you guys can go to simplysafe.com slash landshark. I'm also gonna have it linked below in the description. Big thank you once again to Simply Safe. Now let's eat. Fine. <laughs> oh, is that how we're starting this section? <laughs> Why? Was it BOGO? Yeah, it was BOGO. That was perfect. This man needs no introduction. This is my good buddy, 
James, also known as Yames. Everyone knows me as Yames. I have a lot of people come up to me and really think that's my name now. And just a lot of my close friends are the ones that call me Yames, and obviously he's gonna be the one calling me Yames. He is a chef by trade, a very good one at that, at a restaurant called Sassafras, which I'm gonna have linked below. It's one easily become one of Brooke and I's favorite restaurants. So if you guys actually wanna meet James and have some of his amazing cooking, you guys can check that out. It's in West Palm Beach. And show him some love, follow him on Instagram. I'm gonna have it on the screen here. And while you guys are at it, I know that's a lot of plugs, like this video if you haven't already. Now I'm gonna let James take it away. I have going like the main sauce that's gonna go down for this is called a Berblanc. And we're just gonna like, we're gonna spruce it up a little bit. I added a little citrus to it and I added a little saffron. And uh, Berblanc is just white wine or, um, or vinegar, like reduced down almost to like, almost to like a sticky paste, I wanna say. I mean, come on, we're getting fancy. We're using words like Berblanc, which you know it's French. It's gonna be good. You guys gotta stick around for this one. So also that's, go what, that's going in like the little vegetable mix. I wanted a starch on the plate. Like it's kind of traditional to do like a protein and veggie starch. So the natural chef and me, just wanted to do like just a little bit of like roasted potatoes. I'm gonna put them in the oven first because they're gonna take a while and they're gonna get just get tossed right in with the vegetables right at the end. We're gonna make like a little, I say, I call it a broken vinaigrette, but it's just a really just flavorful marinade for the vegetables itself to finish. Wow. Yeah. Holy syrup. So that's what I was talking about. That just, I just turned that whole bottle of wine into this right here. So it's just like super, super concentrate, like concentrated saffron flavor, white wine flavor. Typically you would put shallots and thyme and, and that stuff in there, but we really don't need it and it's we're doing it at home. This is the part you would add the nice, healthy, heavy cream. Nothing healthy about it, but it's definitely tasty. And you're gonna reduce that down just like you did the wine essentially. And that word is called nappe. And nappe means coating the back of the spoon. So if you stuck the back of the spoon in there, you'd want it to like just coat the spoon without you having to do anything. You just put the spoon in there to coat, coat the back, nappe. Just to like emulsify it a little bit. I know it said it's broken and I kind of want that flavor. So snakehead is probably one of my favorite freshwater fish, if not my favorite freshwater fish. Um, I was telling Brooks that earlier, for like nostalgia purposes, like I would say crappie or speck is like my top, but that's just cause I grew up like fishing out of like Okeechobee and I like am used to eating that. But this is such a mild yet flavorful fish. In comparison, if, you ha if, I, if I had to compare, everyone might have a different opinion than me, obviously. I'd say it's very, very similar to flounder. Texture, flavor. So since you are a chef and you have served thousands and thousands of people, is there any reason anyone should fear or dislike this fish? Absolutely not. If anything, you should go out in your backyard and catch one and eat it, and it'll change your life. Here to here first. It'll change your life. Changing lives out here. I mean, look at that. What are you doing? The Berblanc kind of at the stage that we want it. So what I was saying before, see how it's nappe coating the back of the spoon? So I took it off of the heat, add the butter off the heat, and you're just whisking it in slowly. And if you see any kind of separation happening, almost like a, like the only way I can explain it to you without physically being there is like curdled milk. Stop what you're doing. And the only thing I can say is like heating up some veg stock or chicken stock and kind of just whisking it in and hoping for the best on that one. So that's what you want. You want to see some smoke coming out of there. Don't be alarmed if you see it because it's really what you want to get that nice crust on there. And I have two pans going because I don't want to overcrowd the pan. You want to make sure that oil is like hitting every little piece of the fish. Even if you move it around a tiny, tiny bit, I don't recommend like moving your fish around a lot. All in. Right in the oven to finish. The other one will be right behind it. And what I want to accomplish without even turning on the grill with this nice Cam Chef side burner is you put the vegetables in straight into the pan and just allow that heat to give it like a nice little char. It's just going to give it a nice little element of flavor. Start with no oil. You're going to start to smell like that nice kind of fr fragrant. I wouldn't even 
call it burnt. You have a tiny bit of color on them. They're nice and bright. You want to pull it away from the heat. The vegetables have water in them, obviously. So when you, if you, if I added this right now, it would flame up. So you want to pull it away from the heat, and you're gonna see that smoke just like that. That's exactly what we want to accomplish. I highly recommend getting a grill with a side burner because <laughs> your wife, outside. your wife or girlfriend, will be mad. Some of them have like that nice little bit of, nice little bit of char on them. A little fresh tomato. A little pop. And then we're gonna hit it again with some more salt and pepper. So this is a little vinaigrette to finish off the beans. Toss it right in there. Save a little bit because I'm gonna garnish with uh, a little bit of watercress. So just to finish, just to bring this to another level of like freshness and then get that nice acid pop because me and, me and Victor are acid guys. Where I always say this is the fun part, you can just do what you want here. Do that. You do a nice little puddle. You can do a swoosh. Swoosh, woo! Whatever you're feeling. Something like that. Go down with the veggies. Bright little color pop on there. That same vinaigrette that we toss everything in. You guys know I like to use. Here we go. This is delicious, James. I told James, I don't eat a lot of fresh water fish, but when it comes to Florida fresh water fish, I think the snakehead is one of my most favorite ones to eat. And this is, um, this is delicious. It's beautiful. It's crazy something so ugly <laughs> can taste this good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at that just flake off of Brooks Fork. Steaming. This is my second plate of snakehead, and all I gotta say again is I'm very lucky to have a friend like James because this is, I mean, I already told him this is my favorite thing he's ever made. I mean, come on guys, look at this. This is next level stuff. You got a Bur Blanc, which takes a long time to master. So many people mess it up. You got these delicious vegetables. I already told him these are my favorite vegetables I ever had. And then he turned something like a snakehead into this. So big shout out to James and thank you, dude. So James has cooked for us like a handful of times and every time it's absolutely amazing. But like Victor said, we are very lucky that he can come here and cook this awesome stuff for us because it was absolutely delicious. So good job. Make sure you check out Sazafras. You guys can even say hi to him like it's an open kitchen, right? Yeah, open kitchen. Go and say hi to him and amazing. It's definitely our favorite restaurant. If you guys haven't already, make sure you like the video because a video like this, Victor literally tried to film for three days straight. Like he puts a lot of work into this and even though there might not have been that much fishing footage, he put the time into it going through the rain for like three days straight. So give him a big thumbs up for that. The, I think I agree with you guys on this one. I think this is one of my favorite ones. It, it came together really well. I didn't feel any struggle at all. And it, it was, it's always fun to be here. This is always fun to do. I'm happy I have Victor as a friend. Like the, I've got to experience and meet so many great people because of him. And he's given me some exposure for the restaurant as well, which we're in a time of need. So I really appreciate all that. And I love doing this. So thank you guys.